What's up, dude? Let's be real here, guys. Beer can chicken definitely wasn't invented by a sober person. Man, what, what if we took a beer and just took it up a nice chicken? We put a beer in this, put it up a chicken's We'll put a beer in the chicken! So I've actually never made a beer can chicken myself, but to be totally honest with you, from a culinary standpoint, I'm not sure it does anything at all. Today I'll be doing a side-by-side -side test with two identical chickens to find out if this is even a valid technique. Now let's go! To start, I'm gonna show you how to make something that I know works. It's a homemade barbecue spice rub that I use mostly on chicken, although you could use it on beef, lamb, or pork as well. Super easy, guys. It's just white sugar, brown sugar, smoked paprika, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, ground mustard, ground ginger, and chipotle powder, although you could use another chili powder if you don't have that. We're gonna give this a good mix. And it's as simple as that, your barbecue rub is done. Drop it into a Tupperware container, whoops. And I don't know if you knew this about chefs, but we can always tell if something is gonna fit into another container. If you've ever worked in the restaurant industry, you definitely know this is true. Pop the lid on that, label it barbecue rub, and I'll try to use this up within about two months for optimal freshness, although it will last longer. For the purpose of this test, I got two identical chickens. They weigh almost exactly the same. And all I'm gonna do is spray them with a little bit of oil. That's just to help the seasoning stick. And I'll just start dusting on my barbecue rub from a nice height so it's evenly distributed. Make sure you get in the wing there really turn them around and just do a good job to get that seasoning everywhere and when you're cooking any chicken you really want to season that cavity as well the inside of the bird just like so and if you have the foresight you can actually wrap these up stick them in the fridge for two three hours let that seasoning really penetrate deeper into the meat that can only do them a lot of good although because this test is just about the beer and the chicken I'm gonna just go ahead and cook them right away now before we cook these chickens let me introduce today's sponsor Typher this Typher sink quad is their four probe wireless thermometer that brings you the best results every time you grill, smoke, roast, or air fry your favorite meats and poultry. And what makes the Typher Sink stand out from other brands is they give you the option to either just use the unit with the built-in display, or you can choose to download the app which you can use on your phone from anywhere. Another great feature is that this thermometer does all the math for you by calculating the remaining cooking time for the desired temperatures, making your time in the kitchen less stressful. And each of the four probes has six sensors that are working seamlessly to calculate the most accurate temperatures. Typher Bluetooth technology also brings you the most stable connection so you don't have to worry about that disconnecting while you're in the middle of a cook. If you've been looking for a really reliable wireless thermometer, the Typher Sync is the one for you. And as an added bonus, the Typher Sync quad is now considerably thinner. And don't miss their Olympic sale that's going on from July 26th through August 11th. You can click the link in the description below and use code THATDUDE to save 10% off your Typher order. Now let's get back to the chickens. And to do that, I just laid down some lump charcoal as well as some apple wood and then used my very cool flamethrower gun to start a fire. There's a strong possibility I'm a pyromaniac, but this device just makes starting your coals really fun. There's a discount through the link in the description if you want to check it out. That works so f***ing good. And then I just fired up my Typher sink and inserted those probes into the same spot on both chickens. I then set my target time to 165 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little bit over for chicken, but because the Typher sink auto calculates the cookover time, it will be pulled probably around 155 internal. And once my coals were ready to go, I just popped my beer inside my beer can chicken holder and placed that chicken on top, making sure to push it down so it was closer to the bottom. I set the control chicken right next to it and then we were good to go. So I popped a lid on it before returning inside to monitor the cook from the Typher sink. And since the beer can chicken hit the target temp first, it was time to remove it and give it a good rest. Our control chicken was done about five minutes later, so I set it next to the beer can chicken to rest as well. And honestly, at this point, both chickens looked and smelled amazing, but the real test is gonna be in the taste and the tenderness department. All right, my friends, these chickens are complete. Let's get Marcus in here and let's do a taste test to see if that beer even did anything at all. Now, first things first, the beer can chicken actually cooked 13 minutes faster than the one without the beer, which was interesting. I thought it was gonna be slower just because that beer was kind of cold when it went inside of the chicken. And you see it did that because of, because of science. All right, Marcus, first thing I wanna see is like how much beer evaporated from this and kind of sniff it a little bit. What's your guess? If I were to guess, I would say it's a quarter empty. I don't know, what would you guess? My heart wants all of it to be gone. Really? The whole point of this is so you get the flavor and the moisture, right? Evaporation test, here we go. I gotta de, uh, de throw in this chicken. Yeah. Oh, it was... oh, drippy. Oh. So the first thing we notice is this beer is completely full. Oh, you wanna drink a hot chickeny beer? You can mm. just drink that. So seeing as it's full, that means there's been zero evaporation, right? I was thinking that beer can chicken sort of steams inside of the chicken, which then could do something, but 
without any evaporation, what, what is it doing? Perfuming, Get perhaps. Get this shit out of here. It smells like hot Yuck. beer in here. Now the guy at the beginning of the video, he would have drank that beer. I'm eating your canned chicken! Not me though, that's not me anymore. A few years ago, maybe. May you do the honors and sniff its butt, please? Smells like butt. I really don't, do you smell beer? I don't- It doesn't, it does not. I it's smell, I, maybe like a barely. ghost, like a, like a whisper of a ghost of beer. There's some slight yeast, I think I'm maybe making it up too. Let's smell the other one just to be sure. It don't stink. Oh dude, you're it's, dripping. I swear oh they smell the same, God, they smell the dripping. same. Let's try the control first, I think that makes sense. We smoked a lot of chickens on the channel too, and they're always super juicy. I don't know if you need a beer up it. I don't think the beer does anything. I'm, I'm sticking with my claim in the beginning of the video. There's the breast of the chicken without the beer and it looks really juicy and good. All right, Marcus, let's, let's try it, right? It looks really good, damn. Regular schmegular. Mm -hmm. If you cook it right, moisture's not gonna be an issue. Smoked chicken's the juiciest kind of chicken I've ever had. Pull it at 155, it'll come up to where you need it to be. Something about smoked chicken, hot and fast, that's really good. Tenderness is like yeah. kind of insane and the flavor's really nice, the barbecue rub is great. Sweet, salty, spicy. I'll see some beer. Okay, let's try the uh, beer. Now there's a small chance that all the liquid in there was just fat that dripped into the can and replaced the exact amount of beer that used to be in it. You know what, Marcus, that's a good, that's a good thought, man. I didn't even consider that. Okay, so here we go, guys. I just wanted to do something. There's a whole apparatus being sold. Yeah, I want it to be real too. We're gonna get to the bottom of it, don't worry. This one honestly looks very, very juicy and good as well. It looks just pretty much the same as the other one. Give it a smell. Zero beer. Mm, zero beer. Cheers. <laughs> exactly the same. There's no beer going on in any of this. It tastes exactly the same. It's cooked exactly the same. Let's try another little piece. I don't even drink. You just pour beer on it. You're fooling yourself. If you want your chicken to taste like beer, maybe brine it in beer, but shoving a can up its ass doesn't do a thing. It's just a bit of theater, isn't it? Like legitimately zero. It does not have any essence of beer. If you are blindfolded, you would not have any confidence and it doesn't do anything. Beer and chicken do go together, but you just drink a beer while you eat a chicken. You don't shove a, a, a cold beer up a chicken's yeah. butt. You, you just like don't. beer. If you like beer, you're wasting one. Learn how to cook a chicken right. That's how you get moist chicken. You don't just shove cans up them. If you want to shove something up a chicken's butt, a little thyme, a little rosemary, a maybe, lemon, maybe a little bit of lemon, a little garlic, some aromatics, a little shallot. Keep the beers in the fridge where they belong, my friends. Jeez. Thanks for hanging out with me today, my friend. I hope you're ready to not make a beer can chicken. Just do it another way. Down in the description, you'll find links to my Master in the Making ebook, as well as links to products and equipment I love to use here on this channel. And if you want another good chicken recipe, this smoked Alabama chicken with that white barbecue sauce is phenomenal, as well as one of my personal favorites. It's a little different, but chicken tikka masala always just hits so good. Until next time, you know I love you in my-